You are listening to Making It in the Toy Industry, episode number 156. Welcome to Making It in the Toy Industry, a podcast for inventors and entrepreneurs like you. And now your host, Ajel Wade. Hey there, toy people, Ajel Wade here, and welcome back to another episode of the Toy Coach Podcast, Making It in the Toy Industry. This is a weekly podcast brought to you by thetoycoach.com. Today's podcast episode is part two of the three-part series that's going to take us through the rest of the year. And remember, for every episode the rest of this year, we are highlighting interviews that I conducted at our recent toy industry event, Shy Tag, which is the Chicago Toy and Game Fair that's held in Q4 every year. At the show this year, I interviewed 10 creators, all with different products, from book authors to toy and game creators. In these interviews, we dove into their personal experiences, developing their brands, and of course, lessons for listeners of this podcast. Now, we do have full video of these interviews, and those videos are scheduled to release starting tomorrow on YouTube. So head over to youtube.com slash the toy coach, subscribe to my channel so you'll be notified as as soon as those videos become available. Okay, so for today's episode, I am so excited to share with you these three interviews. First, an interview with Kate Hunt, a current student in Toy Creators Academy and the creator of the Ultimate Treehouse Game. After that, we will go right into an interview with Joe Barron of Gray Matters Games, the games company with a devotion to supporting brain health. In short, they believe that exercising the gray matter in your head matters. And finally, we'll wrap up today's episode with a conversation with Rebecca Jatan of Goliath Toy and Games. Now, in today's podcast episode, you're going to hear how two-dimensional board games can fill the desire for a three-dimensional play set, and how the mom that created that game got it on the shelves of over a dozen stores by thinking outside of the box in terms of placement. You'll hear how a road trip can inspire a game idea and launch an entire games company with a story behind Grey Matters Games. And finally, learn about the kid inventor who landed a deal with a major toy company. Keep in mind, these interviews were conducted in person at a toy trade show, so the background might be a bit noisy, but I stress the importance of these in-person shows, and you'll hear why in these interviews. As I said at the top of this episode, this is part two of a three-part series. So without further ado, let's dive into the interviews held by me, the toy coach at Shy Tag, the Chicago Toy and Game Fair put on by People of Play and Mary Cousin. Hey there, toy people. I'm here with Kate Hunt, inventor of the Ultimate Treehouse game and soon to be inventor of many more other things, I think. Kate, welcome to the show. Hey, happy to have you here. Thank you. I actually have never seen your game in person. Oh, it's awesome. Yes. So first, can we talk a little bit about Ultimate Treehouse Game? Then I want to get into why you're at the show today and what it's been like going to like in-person shows the past year. And then we we'll to talk a little bit about your journey into the toy industry. We're going to hit a lot of things today. Awesome. A lot of things. So first, tell me about your game. What is this? So Ultimate Treehouse is a building and strategy game for kids seven and up. Okay. So everybody starts with these really nice mats, which are kind of like mouse pads or like a, a Pokemon or Magic the Gathering mat, like a neoprene. So it has a really nice feel. And the goal of the game is to get six items into your treehouse first. So you've got resource cards and action cards in your hand. I want some cards. Yep, yep. This okay. is your how to play. So you've got like rope and glass. Okay. I'm just going to give you a pile. Thank you. All right. And then on the table, you'll have a store, which is a couple cards of elements that are going to go into your treehouse. Okay. So there'll be five of those up. And then as we're playing, okay. you'll see like if you want to build a zip line, you need two rope and a metal. Ooh! So once you I have could that, build a zip line. Yeah, you could okay. build it right into your treehouse. So everything. Wait. Fits. Oh, never mind. I thought this was metal. Oh, I have a wild card. A wild okay. Card. Yeah. I have a wild card. So what do I do? You would play it down. Yeah. Play it. Wow. I got, but I'm going to play two rope and a wild card so that I can build a zip line. Yeah. In my treehouse. Yeah. I'm going to build this. Okay. So, so I would I, play it. Yep. 
Everything okay. fits onto the oh. mat, kind of like a puzzle. So everything has oh. a, a specific location. And the nice thing about that is you can have any combination of elements that there is. So there's 15 different elements in the tree house and you can have kind of any combination. You do have to have floor, walls, and a roof, and then any other three elements. Oh, I just, okay, so I spent my cards on something I didn't need. Well, you know, you do, because okay. you, you need three <laughs> extra things. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So the strategy comes in because on every turn, you either can build or play an action card, but you can't do both. So kids oh, are forced okay. to decide, is it more important for me to build right now, or is it more important for me to, to like slow down an opponent or get resources so that I can build next turn? Okay. So they're forced to make a choice every turn, and that's kind of where the strategy comes yeah. in. And when all of these, what do you call these cards? Elements. When all the element cards are played, the treehouse will then kind of look like this. In the, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a puzzle and a board game all in one. This yeah. is really smart. So I know before you were an inventor, you were a chemist. Yes. So... Did that influence this game idea? Not at all. Where did you come up with this? So we live in Chicago, so we were in an apartment for many, many, many years. Okay. And so I have kids, and they would say, why can't we just build a treehouse in that tree or that tree or that tree? Like any tree outside. Any tree outside. <laughs> right. So, you know, being in an apartment has a ton of advantages, and I love living in apartments. But you don't have a basement. You don't have a treehouse. You don't have a yard. And so there was just that desire for, like, this little nook um, that's theirs. So an actual treehouse is expensive and hard and right. takes a long time and you have to have, you know, a right setup. But like, I think a lot of kids want that. So it's something you can do in 20 minutes and you get that sensation of like building this thing that's yours and it's your little hideout. So you made this game because your kids wanted their real tree. Yes. That's so funny. Yeah. Did it satisfy their they d- Yes. What? No. Really? Because you really feel like you're building. The way everything fits in, just like, just exactly. Yeah, let's hold you know? it up. This right. is the board game. And then the, the bunny goes like right in there. Yeah. yeah. So everything fits in. So there's a lot of little guidelines of like ropes and little hooks and things. So you can see where everything goes. So it gives you that visual. Like here, this is where the swing is going to go. Like the hammock. Here is a slide. The slide goes in right so there. you can really see how you're You can really see how it fits in. Okay. And the hammock is going to go like right here. Uh, like yeah. up a little bit. Yep. Right there. So everything fits in kind of exactly. So it's really, people have said it's really satisfying to place it onto the mat and the mat feels really good. So it's got a lot of like sensory, tactile, yeah, Yeah. stuff. Oh, that's so cool. And what's really cool about this invention is that you licensed it. Yes, I did. And you didn't mean to. Well, I, as a new, as a new person in the toy industry, I really didn't know the yeah. pathways to getting this done. So yeah. for my, for this game, I essentially self-published. Yes. I, I, I got an artist. I put it all together and, and I, you manufactured, I manufactured it. It's and like, this is ready to sell. This yeah. is not a prototype. This is, it is ready good to, to go. Sell. And so when I went to Astra, I was Astra. Kate? Astra is the <laughs> American Specialty Toy Retail Association and yes. they have a big show. Yeah. And I went to the innovator. Uh, Pitch section. Yes. Something. And I learned that the key word was licensing. Yeah. And so then at Astra, I actually pitched Fat Brain. Yes. And then this talk started from there, and we were able to put together a deal over the summer, and they, they're working on it. So their version will come out next year, and I'm really excited. So what I like to tell people is licensing your idea is like developing an idea to sell, and being an entrepreneur is like developing a product, a physical product to sell. So Kate... Developed a product to sell and then inadvertently sold the idea of it yeah. as well. As so I both. did a little bit of both. <laughs> a little bit of both. So now you're here at this show. Yeah. Tell me why you're here at this show. I am trying to move into inventory. So I still have this first printing and I'm in about 20 stores and selling, you know, all over. But I also have products that I need to you know, move. I didn't know you were in 20 stores. That's yeah, cute. that wow. I, uh, that was like part of it was Astra. I picked up a lot of people at Astra and then wow. just calling people and finding specific things. So one cool thing is like I got into some museum toy stores yeah. and I got into Arboretum gift shops. Uh-huh. So I was like, you know, it's a tree. I, I met someone uh-huh. at Astra who works for the national parks and he does the, their gift stores. Wow. So things that I wouldn't have thought of, you know, like what who is interested in tree stuff right people who right. are interested in trees right and that's just like another route to go was that something that fat brain was interested in when you were showing your concept did they see value in the fact that you already had some store placement adam hockerman who's amazing and wonderful person he took it home and played with his girls oh. and i think people once they play it it's just like fun 
So are you planning to replace this with anything? Because you do have all these connections now at all these retailers. They have your product. It might be selling well. You do have an, you know, a unique opportunity that a lot of new toy creators don't have where you have relationships and you could say, oh, yes. I have a new product. Do you want to try this next year? I would like to license from here on out. Yes. There are advantages to both, but yeah. what I have learned is like sales is hard. And, and like I, you know, in college, I worked two Christmas seasons at Toys R Us yeah. and I, I get it and I love retail and it's really fun, but I like inventing and tinkering and test playing and trying this and trying that. And, and that's where my kind of passion lies. Yeah. And so I like the idea of, of handing it over. <laughs> And saying, now you run with this. Now that you are no longer a toy entrepreneur, and yes. you're venturing into the world of toy inventorship. Okay. You had to come up with a, a need for your toy invention studio. Yes. What is your toy invention My studio? My toy invention name? studio is called One Quick Round. One Quick Round. And it's because that's the kind of games that I feel like I'm drawn to and a lot of people are drawn to. Games where you play and you're like, oh gosh, I was so close to winning one more round. Like, let's go again. Let's go again. Yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. create games where people... The second it's over, they're ready to play again. Yeah, okay. This is funny because I know we were talking before this and you said you hadn't yet listened to my podcast episode with Chris <laughs> Baggerholt. Yeah. And one of the things she said, but she noticed games that do really well are things that people say they want to play again. Right. So that's like what your whole invention studio yes. was focused my, on. I, yeah, because there are games that I love, but they... For example, my son likes the longer play games that take an hour. Yeah, like and I get to ride. Yeah, like, or like he's really into Root right now, which oh. is by Leader Games, which is a wonderful game, super cute, like adorable. Yeah. It takes an hour. Okay. So it's one of those things where like you got to have a little bit more of a time commitment yeah. and not everyone has that always. And then if you lose, you just feel like I invested an hour <laughs> yeah. and I have nothing to show. My husband <laughs> and I play a ton of Monopoly Deal, which oh. is just Monopoly, the card game essentially. Uh -huh. And it's great because it's over in like, Eight minutes. That's good. So we'll play like two rounds or three rounds. Yeah. And now, however much time you have you want to do, but like you yeah. can play and be like, all right, rematch. One more. Rematch. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. oh, I was so close. So that's what you're focusing on. That's what I'm kind of going you. for. That like, I want more. So do you have any new things in the work? I know you can't share the products you're developing. Okay, yeah. But like what so, category of games are you focused on right now? So this got me to learn that you know, this mat was like the hardest part of production and Fine. it's the most expensive part of the game. Oh. It's a really nice material and, and getting it the right quality and getting it the right, you know, feel and, and all the that. Colors. And the colors, right. So after this, I was kind of like, I want to do just straight cards. And so Why? I like those games. And yeah. also it's just an easier, it's a bigger margin. It's an easier printing. There is like that aspect of like, it's a smaller box. It fits on the shelf. Right, right, right. And we play a lot of card games. Right. So, so my next couple, I have some card games I'm working on, and then going to the Shy Tag Innovator and Inventor thing. Yeah. All weekend, I was like, oh, I have this idea. All these things were popping in my head. So yeah. I have some like more toy things that I've not done toys yet. Yeah. That I am working on as well. Yeah. So card games, toys, etc. One thing I feel like you're not giving yourself enough credit for <laughs> is the combination of puzzle and game. Mm -hmm. Puzzles are so big. I yeah. work with somebody who helps license people's ideas. And whenever there's a puzzle involved, he's like, oh, give it to me, I can sell it. He's oh, like, really? he's okay. like, I can sell a puzzle, like any yeah. kind of puzzle. And I that's the feedback it. I get the most is people are like, yeah. I love, it's the so puzzle. satisfying. It's satisfying. placing it there yes. and it fits just perfectly and it looks so beautiful. And you can't, you wouldn't get that if this was all cards. Right. So I'm only saying that to say, like, don't limit yourself too much. Right. Especially if you're going on the licensing path, because then this totally won't be your problem. If you have an idea and it has this unique, like, platform to play on top of, I don't know. Right. Don't there were a way to Okay. Ask. Hey, I'm going to ask you the final closing question. Yeah. First, what toy blew your mind as a kid? Okay, there's a game I've been thinking about a lot lately, and I don't know the name of it, but it, you had to build an arch. It was like a plastic arch, okay. and each piece of the arch, I think it was all like center stone or keystone or something, okay. was actually like a bucket. So you had to build this cool arch, and then you had to put these things in it, and it would collapse Fun. in. Okay. And it was just a neat way of doing a building engineering toy that I had never seen before. Nothing else was like it. And... It just had like two layers of play because building it was part of the fun right. and then destroying it was part of the fun. fun. And so What's I, it called? I think it was called like center cornerstone or something. Okay, we're going to find I'm it. I'm going to have to find it. Yeah. I'm sure Send it's like, a, like an early 90s game or something. Cool. Yeah. Okay. 
And then I want to hear a little advice for anybody that's thinking about going the entrepreneur path where they develop an idea, a product to sell it, or the inventor path where they're developing an idea to sell it. Advice. What would advice. you say? Advice. Take a gel class. This is my advice. What class? Uh, what the Design Creators oh. Academy oh. class. Because as I'm taking it, I'm like, oh, that would have been helpful to oh, know. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. So some of You're the, only on module two. I know. Oh my gosh, and still? But still. No, no, oh. it just, it's just... It's a way of organizing all the information. Yeah. So like some of the things I was like, oh, I kind of did that, even though I didn't really know I was supposed to do it. Right. But you have it organized yeah. and like cut out in like a very, you know, processed way. Yeah. Whereas I feel like I was kind of like all more sporadic yeah, about, yeah, yeah, yeah. about it. Yeah. So I like the way that you walk through everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So take my course. So take the class. Toy Creators Academy. And no. just research, <laughs> research, research. I always yes. would like go to the toy section with my kids at Target and take pictures of things and look at things and like, yeah. like look and see how much is that? Oh, wow. They're selling that board game for, they can sell a $40 board game here. Okay. That's yes. information. Yeah. So just like look at toys a lot yeah. and, and pick them up and hold them yes. and see what's going on. Look at the size of the box and the price of things and the, the way things are named. Yeah. Like the design, age ranges, look age at all range. that stuff. Yeah. Time to play. Do you have time to play on here? I do. You do. Time to play. 20 minutes. Yeah. See? So yeah, just see, see what's out there yeah. and, and where the holes are. Okay. Now, Kate, if somebody's watching this, where can they get in touch with you? UltimateTreeHouseGame.com or on Instagram, I'm at one quick round. Nice, nice. Where, what show will you be going to next after this? Probably Astra again. Which one? Not Toy Boat, yeah. but the next June is... Did you mean that your next event was going to also be the TCA Virtual Pitch Event? Yes. Is that... <laughs> My next event is the TCA Pitch Events, where I am pitching several things. And then the Astro event. And then the Astro event. In June. Events. Yes. My next in-person versus my next yes. virtual. Yes. yes. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for being here today, Kate. Yes. Good luck. Everyone buy Ultimate Treehouse. Thank you for being here. Bye. 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 Hey there, toy people. I'm here at Shytag with Joe Barron, founder of Gray Matters Games, a company that designs and publishes games that are now available in stores worldwide. 4,000 stores. Welcome to the show. Thank Joe. you for having me. I'm glad that you're right. here. And we were already talking before we started rolling. I've learned a lot. We're going to try to reiterate some of that greatness. Not all of it, no. We'll reiterate, we'll reiterate all of it. But I first want to start out and say, did you always know you wanted to work in the games or toy industry? It came as a total 180. So I started my career in corporate finance and mergers and acquisitions. Really? So did a dozen years there. And then we were on a family road trip through the Arizona desert. And my, the two most competitive people I know, my wife and my mother said, entertain us. So I came up with this, this kind of idea of like a name that tune betting style trivia game uh -huh. that we played in the car for about an hour. And they're like, this is amazing. You should make it a game. And so I started prototyping it, played it with friends. And eventually we decided to kickstart the game. It was successful. What was it called? You Betcha. Oh, You Betcha. I feel like I've seen that. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's over at the table and... Yeah, since then, we, you know, that was five years ago, we've launched eight games. Wow. Yeah. Is this what you do full-time now? It's my full-time job now. When did you turn full-time? Tell me about that transition. Yeah, so I, while I was working on, on You Betcha, I still spent a year in corporate, so there's that steady paycheck, benefits, all that stuff. Yeah. Once we, you know, launched You Betcha on Kickstarter, it was successful, and then we had to start fulfilling. I left my job wow. and just went all in on Gary Matters How big games. was that Kickstarter? You know, it, all, it was pretty modest. I think it was like between fifteen and 20000 You were bold. You were yeah. like, yeah, this is enough. I'm going to quit this whole finance thing. Yeah. What is that? You know, I have a great, I have a great wife that has supported us through this whole thing. Yeah. And, you know, it takes a while for it to grow and pay off where it can be financially stable. Yeah. But now we, I feel like we're over the hump. We got through COVID and yeah. now like we're, we're in really good shape as a company. What was one of the biggest lessons you learned coming through COVID as a company? You know, I think just being really resilient and making sure that all the relationships that you have are good because when things go bad, people can get nasty about things. Yeah. We always took the high road on things where people had challenges, try to help out toy stores, game stores that were challenged. We gave ga games away for free in some cases to help them out through some of the financial issues that they're having. So I see that, you know, that we made those good relationships. We kept them through COVID and now they're just stronger than ever. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's, a, it's not just about networking and, and nurturing relationships in good times and bad times. It's exactly. It's really, a great lesson. That's right. And today you said eight years in? 
No, oh, five years. Five, five years, eight games. Five years, eight games. Yes. So we're five years in, and you brought together, you brought today the root beer float game. Yes. I mean, this is an inventor product. Yes. So this is a game that was created actually by two local Chicago inventors, Brady Peterson and Tim Swindle. Cool. So we, we love the game, the packaging. It's our first real family game for ages eight plus. What do you do? How do you play this? Yeah, so there's, when you open this up, there's ice cream ball, which is a giant ping pong ball. Yeah. Straws, cherries, and then the can. And you use all of those components to do all these sorts of like minute to win it challenges to create all, to get all four ingredients of your root beer float. Okay, like what's it, like give me an example of one of the challenges. Okay, so let's say we do a co-op challenge together. Okay. You grab a cherry, you have to, volleyball serve the cherry off the wall oh. and then i have to catch it in the can right <laughs> if we can complete it then we get one of the ingredient cards to put into our hand so is the whole thing a cooperative game there's three types of challenges there's solo cooperative where you get to pick your partner yeah. and then head to head where you pick you, who you go against but then how do you know if you win who wins when, like head to head yeah the person who wins gets to collect one of the ingredients okay and then once you've gone around and round a few times. Oh, and co-op, we both get to get it. We both get right, to get okay, it, yeah. Okay, so okay. then when you collect all four into your hand, you win the game. Ooh, so have you ever, yeah. like, played this game and, like, thrown a co-op challenge because, you know, the other, if you win this co-op challenge, the other person's going to get it? Well, yeah, you've yeah. got to be strategic about who you want to pick as your partner. Oh. Like, oh, they have three ingredients, so I'm right. going to pick the person who only has one. Yes. Oh, right? that sounds fun. Yeah. Maybe we should get this. <laughs> Maybe we should get this. That's fun. Okay. And... And wait, actually, hold on. Because we have inventors that listen to this podcast, can you tell me a little bit about how you work with inventors? So, you know, the, the inbound stuff we, we have on our website, if you go on the top inventors. Okay. And then we have a very easy submission form for people to submit their ideas. Uh, do you review weekly, monthly? I'm the only whenever? employee, so I review them as they come in. Yeah. But I'm very, you know, I, I'm quick to know, like, whether it's a fit for Grey Matters games. What is the style of Grey Matters games? If an inventor wants to invent something for you, what should they focus on? So I look for games that have two things. One is that you can take this game and sit down with the kids, the parents, and even the grandparents, uh, okay. and we can all have fun playing it together. Right. Um, the second thing is I look for like a marketability angle yeah. that there's a trend going around that fits that well. So if you think of like challenge, there's like on TikTok, all different yeah. challenges. Yeah, yeah. If you think of like word wipeout, wordle, like word games this yes. year. Yeah, so yeah. you try to come out with something that's going to have already some traction yeah. that we can then kind of glom onto and, and really do well with. So that is a thing that I feel like a lot of new inventors and entrepreneurs sometimes struggle with. Like they have their amazing idea they want to drive home, but they don't yeah. want to spend time thinking about how it fits into what's trending in society right now. Yes. But when you're small and you're starting out, like sometimes that's what you have to do to get a leg up. You're competing with all these major game and toy companies. You need something as an yes. edge. So bringing that point up, you mentioned you're part of an incubator. Yep. So what does your incubator do for you? So it provides all the resources that you need in order to really boost your business. So if you think about like in buckets of what you need to be successful with a business, uh -huh. there's talent, yeah. um, there's knowledge, know-how, yeah. there's funding, right? They take all that and they connect you to the different resources that you need. So okay. on the talent side, they, they get you interns, they, get you, they connect you with people that can someday be employed by your business. On the funding side, we've built this huge community of angel and VC investors that invest in small businesses. And then on the know-how side, we do all sorts of workshops like accounting, tax, product development, all that stuff. So they're gaining that knowledge and we bring in mentors as well that can, like yourself, yeah. a mentor, right? Okay. I'm not a part of this incubator, though I might be after this, <laughs> but I do have like a, a group of women who, are, who have similar educational businesses like I yeah. do. Yeah. And we're constantly sharing funding opportunities. The reason I have the interns coming into my business that I do is because my friend was like, you got to apply for these interns, state pays for them. Right. You know, and she's, and you know, we're just sharing all those ideas. So it's really important to have that support. I think you're, it's important that when you're, when you have an idea to start a business to think about the smartest way that you can start it. Right. Yes. Like, and maybe an incubator as opposed to trying to do everything yourself is a smart way. Did you have funding other than your Kickstarter for your business? We've essentially bootstrapped the whole wow. business. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So this game, this is a cool story. Yes. Tell me how Word Wipeout came to be. 
Yeah, so we did just a, a class project with uh, the graphic design students from College of DuPage. Uh -huh. How are you connected to them? So College of DuPage is one of the founding members of Innovation DuPage, the incubator accelerator right. okay. that we work okay. with. So they work with, as like their capstone project, they bring in real clients to do uh -huh. real projects that will someday be commercially available. Right. So this just started as an idea of a game, mm -hmm. and we we did all the packaging. They actually helped like figure out the gameplay, so we did some play testing with them. And you know, now it's at Barnes and Noble nationwide. How many students worked on this game? Three students. And how long did you work with them on this game? It was about four months of them working on the packaging together, and then I worked with a. Uh, another group to do so there's a t uh, electric timer yeah and here we worked with them on like the industrial design and doing the oh, the timer nice. because it's a big important part of the game yeah. and actually there's a fun story with the timer when we were play testing the original timer it only had sound and one of the play testers had parents that were deaf so they couldn't oh, they couldn't wow. use the timer oh, we added an led light that turns on when you hit it and then when it gets to five seconds, it starts flashing faster and faster. Wow. And then it stops when it's done. So now there's 80, what I came to find out, 80 million people are hard of hearing worldwide. Yeah. So now they can access the game as well. And that calls back to like your original kind of why statement of you want games that the whole family can play, exactly. young to old, and now yeah. like, and any ability also. Right. So that's really good. And then I have to say, like he has at the bottom here, the names of all the students on the box of who participated. And I think that's so important because I remember when I was, when I graduated yeah. and I started working in toy design that I had to do all this like internship work to try to get like real world experience. But you're trying to do this internship work and it's a full-time job while you're in school. And then what you come out with is good, but it's not like a, it's not like a yeah. full, you know, going to have a long shelf life product. Right. So now these students have like, they can go get jobs right out of school and be like, I actually worked on developing a yeah, product. Yeah, bring this to your interview. In, where right? is this available? A nationwide at Barnes & Noble. They should, I have a product that's in Barnes & Noble. Yes, you should hire me. Right. You know, <laughs> where I just graduated, but I already have a product that's in Barnes & Noble. No, that's just, that's amazing. Yeah. That's a great it's program. Really fun. Yeah. Okay. So I went, okay, I want to ask more stories about your struggle. Have you experienced <laughs> any struggle at all as you've been developing your games brand? Yeah, I think. One big thing as you're, as you are growing faster, the faster you grow, yeah. inventory, right? So it, there's a lot of cash that goes up front yeah. and it's seasonal because a lot of it's sold during the holidays. So you're like, oh man, we're going to like triple the business this year. Where am I going to find all the money to, to do the print runs, right? So there's the cash side of it as well. Obviously, all of us went through the, all the supply chain issues yeah, yeah, yeah. where, you know, uh, a container was $27,000. Yeah, a container yeah. was went from $4,000 to $27,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now we're back down to eight. So, now, yeah. <laughs> so what's better? Yeah. But it's, wait, it's I have better. a question. Yeah. So, do you, first of all, do you remember the first big order? Did you know your first big order was coming before you got it? Yeah, you know, the bigger retailers, they're planning out Projecting. a year to yeah. nine months ahead. So, you, you get like your award letter well before you would you'd put in the order. But that, that lead time is getting like very like, you get the award and it's like, man, we got to get this to our distributor in like six months. Like it's really getting tight. very tight. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the first time you got that award letter, I'm just curious, like, what did you do? Did you end up taking a loan? Did you end up saying like, we need, well, you know, you did everything bootstrapped. Did you say, yes. we're going to take savings? Like, how did you feel? I want to know. Yeah. It's like, all, all right. Like <laughs> you're doing it and you're like, pray the money comes back like in nine months, like. In it's nine going on. Yeah, right. Oh. I mean, you figure out different ways to, to, you know, you can take loans against your IRA, loans against your 401k that yeah. you can pay back. And it's, it's difficult because when you're first starting out, there's no that like bank financing. You don't have two years of financials to show them that you're a profitable bu yeah. business. So now we can get, we're to the point where we can go and get a, like a line Thank of credit right. and, and have some and ease some of that financial stress. That I find it's even hard to get a grant because some grants are like, can you show proof of your business being a business for a certain amount of time? Yeah, it's time consuming to it's fill out the grants. Yeah. This one I'm filling out for like minority businesses, literally it's like <laughs> 35 documents on the last question. There were like 30 uh, questions. The last question, there are like 35 documents and some of them have to be notarized. 
I'm like, oh my goodness. What? Okay, so I want to wrap up and give you my final questions for today. Number sure. one, what was what toy blew your mind as a kid? So I blew my mind as a kid. Ooh, I, I think the 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 one early on was the Furby, just because like really? you could interact with it. Yeah, really, I thought they it was were like so, so creepy. <laughs> they it are creeped me. Out. They are creepy, but <laughs> it was something that you could like interact with. And, yeah, like, yeah. But I agree. Now I look back, it's like that was there's that's a little creep pack. Do you ex- plan to expand into anything other than games? I think that will stick into games. Uh-huh. I have a passion around Alzheimer's because both my grandparents passed away oh, for Alzheimer's. Sorry. So we actually donate a meaningful portion of our profits to the Alzheimer's oh, that's really nice. Association. Yeah. So I think we will we'll look into going into lines that have games that can help people with Alzheimer's or that are neurodiverse or mental health. I just see games can really help that and bring people together. And e- even like if it doesn't help your mental side, but going in and with an Alzheimer's patient, like, a w- like let's find a way to interact with them yeah. versus like sitting there like what do we do with grandma right, right? Yeah. yeah versus like here's a, a game where you can just find a way to have an interaction oh, with that's them. really nice yeah oh, my grandfather struggled with that so he kept calling me my mom and stuff and you don't know what to do like yeah 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 that's me and it's like let's just <laughs> have fun let's like yeah come up like right. a, with me like a lot of them like they they'll remember music from the 40s that yeah. but they don't even remember your name That's right a great so like, idea. how do you bring back out some of those memories from I'm them I'm excited to hear how that goes for you that sounds like Thank a great you. idea and where can people buy 4000 stores worldwide right yeah worldwide. worldwide and where else can they buy them tell name some stores websites so you can find all of our stores are listed on graymattersgames.com okay. even all of like our we have over 500 independent toy and game stores if you type in your address, it'll show you your local store that you can buy them. Yes. And then Root Beer Float is at Barnes & Noble, Meyer, Kohl's, Amazon. Word Wipeout is Barnes & Noble, Indigo up in Canada, and then also on Amazon. Amazing. Thank you for being here Thank today, you. Joe. This, this was great. Fun. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Great people. I'm here at Shy Tag with Rebecca Gatton of Goliath Toys and Games. This is a global games company. Thousands of titles. Okay. So I'm excited to dive into this today. So... Rebecca, I've got to ask, I usually ask people this question from the beginning. Did you always know you were going to work in the toy and game space? I did not. No, okay. But it's something that I've always thought about, and I was lucky enough to get a job working here, and it's amazing. So what, what kind of marketing did you do before Goliath Toys and Games? I did a variety of places. I worked for a computer products company. I worked for Sony Pictures. I yeah. worked for a company that manufactures air compressors. So this by far is way is more fun. The best. Yeah. So <laughs> tell me, I, I would love to hear like day to day, what's a, the biggest difference you see in working on air compressors versus chicken poop bingo marketing? <laughs> is that even a question? <laughs> I mean, we get to actually play these games so we help yeah. like, work with our, our R&D department they're great you know coming up with all of these different fun games but in addition like this one was last year's Young Inventor Award so this yeah. was Cooper Dean our R&D department worked with her to create this game this little chicken he does a little walk and he actually poops out on the board and then you use little poop coupons to mark your little area to create bingo. I was a judge on this year's Young Inventors Challenge. So for those of you that don't know, Shy Tag is also a part of People of Play. People of Play puts on an annual Young Inventors Challenge. Cooper Dean. Cooper Dean was the 2019 winner of the Young Inventor Challenge, and she got a licensing deal after that, and it turned into this game with Goliath Toys and Games. I did, at the end of my submission, as a judge for this challenge, I wrote that she should be the winner. I don't know if my husband, he also judged this challenge, wrote that as well, but we love Chicken Poop Bingo. So, so I love Chicken Poop Bingo, one of my favorite. But I'm curious, while working with an inventor, do you know why your R&D team was drawn to this game? Out of all of the games that were submitted or that there were to choose from, what do you think was so special about Chicken Poop Bingo? I think it's actually special because it's actually based on something that happens in real life. So how do you play chicken poo bingo? So first off, you take this little chicken head off, and then there's a little funnel. You put Uh the little poop in there. Then you reattach the head all the way. And there's like a board in here, right? So here's a little board. Nice. It's our chicken poop bingo board. (laughs) So then you, you would get little bingo card. Okay, cool. Oh, it's so cute. And then there's like these little 
That is hilarious. Oops, that are your little markers. That is hilarious. So you would, poop emoji markers. Would, that's so cute. So you would fill him up, wind him up, and then let him. And he walks around. And, and then he like poops whenever he feels fit. Yep. Look at him go. So he'll go around and he'll poop. And wherever he lands, you mark your bingo card. Whoever gets five in a row first wins. You are correct. Awesome. And now Cooper, the lovely inventor behind Chicken Poop Bingo, has her face on the back of his box for as long yeah. as the retail. Where can people purchase Chicken Poop Bingo? It's available at Walmart, Target, Amazon, a few other small stores. Does Goliath Games often work with inventors, not just young inventors from the Young Inventor Challenge? Yes, yes. we do. We actually have on our website, there's a link that you can click on. Yeah. And it'll take you right to our R&D department and you can leave them a message and they'll give you a call back. And, and I do know there's like this, you did mention before we started rolling that there's a fun surprise element to some of your really popular toys and games. So mm -hmm. that is something for you inventors submitting to keep in mind when you're submitting concepts and creating ideas for Goliath. Try to figure out that fun toyetic moment, that surprise element that'll get kids wanting to keep coming back again and again. Okay, let's move on. To Trash Dash. Okay. So Trash Dash, it's actually a really fun game. And not only is it fun, but it teaches kids like dexterity. So they actually will have a deck of cards. Uh -huh. And on the deck of cards, they'll flip it over. And there's a bunch of little pieces of trash laying around. So you'll see these little pieces of trash. They flip it over and it'll be, you'll see a card with a color and a little figurine on it. So this one, you would pick up any color dead fish. Oh. And you put it in this little trash can and then... You move your hand right here, and it flips the trash can into the dumpster. Oh, very cool. And the more times that happens, the dumpster gets full, and he's going to get sick. Ooh, and throw it all up on you. So how do you win this game? Well, you lose if oh. you get thrown up on Oh, okay. And this is a brand new toy. Yeah. I know that you specifically wanted to debut this toy at this fair. Why is that? Look at all the kids. Yeah. And look how much they love trash. Yeah. That's the perfect, perfect combination. Is this toy one of the toys being demoed at your table today? It is. It is. What has been some of the feedback you hear from kids when they play this game? Ah! Really? They're just excited. Yeah. Dumping, dumping, dumping. They just keep going and going. And then the, moment. Sort of, the mouth opens and all yeah. the toys come out. All yeah, the top yeah. And we're like. Now, I'm curious. Is this a game that you developed internally or that you worked with an inventor on? We worked with an inventor on this one with this one. And then now I'm, I feel like I want to throw one more thing out there for people that might be watching and maybe they want to be a part of a company like Goliath. Where can they go to learn more about how to join your team, how to become a part of the Goliath family? We do a lot of posting on Indeed and various other job posting sites. So just keep your eyes up. Okay, great. And my last question I love to ask for people on the podcast is what toy blew your mind as a kid? I was a big Hungry Hungry Hippo fan. Ooh, that's a good one. I actually like that That's one. a good game. I love that game. Okay. And what was yours? Polly Pockets. I was obsessed. I had a problem. I had a lot. <laughs> like a bag this tall, just like filled with Polly Pockets. Loved them. Love, love, love them. Thank you so much for being here today, Rebecca. Well, there you have it, Toy People. I hope you enjoyed those interviews. Before we jump into our summary of today's episode and the teachable moments, I want to take a quick break and give a shout out to Evolved Teacher for her review of the podcast. Evolved Teacher wrote, what a gift. This podcast is such a gift. Anyone who is interested in creating anything could benefit from listening. Each show is not only value packed, but also very inspiring. Thank you so much for that review, and I'm happy to share it on the show. Now, let's get into the conclusions of what we learned today. I've got three important takeaways for you. One, the limitations of your home or living space might actually have some great ideas for a board game within them, much like Kate's Ultimate Treehouse game, inspired by her kids who lived in an apartment at the time who wanted to create their own treehouse. Okay, number two, I want you to consider marketability when you're developing your toy or game ideas. How will the theme that you are developing your idea around perform on things like social media? Can you adjust your game or your toy to fit current trends if it's word games or true crime? The third thing I want you to walk away with is this. 
in-person trade shows or fairs are a great place to test out your product. Do not skip on the opportunity to get in front of kids and parents and see how they react to your product. It could help you make changes that will help make your product a success long-term. Now, your action item for this week is to enjoy the holidays, toy people. As always, thank you so much for spending this time with me today. I know your time is valuable and that there are a ton of podcasts out there, so it truly means the world to me that you tune into this one. Until next week, I'll see you later, toy people. Thanks for listening to Making It in the Toy Industry podcast with Ajel Wade. Head over to thetoycoach.com for more information, tips, and advice. Hey, are you an aspiring toy inventor or toy entrepreneur? Then you should check out Toy Creators Academy, the first of its kind online program designed to help you develop and pitch your toy ideas. Head over to toycreatorsacademy.com to learn more.